Today I want to share with you some recently acquired books. I am declaring March TBR month and I have put up my physical TBR, I have put up a TBR tag, I have put up my thoughts on hauls. One of the things that I want to do for TBR March is to clear off my TBR shelf. I have recently acquired quite a few books, mostly from free little libraries. I've had like a little library scavenger hunt since my library tag and I've been looking for all the libraries in my area. I have found quite a few near me and some a little bit further out. It's been fun to check the little free library map anytime we go anywhere and to plot out a few libraries to visit and I've had some good luck finding some books that I want to read. That means that I have quite a few books to share today, and I also have no room on my TBR shelf anymore. I was already eking out space, and now I have no room at all, so I need to do a TBR shelf clear out. Before I show you some books that I purchased, I wanted to show you this um, Agatha Christie book, Halloween Party, that my mom gave me a few months ago. She has been clearing out her bookshelves, and she has been saving murder mysteries and other books for me. This Agatha Christie book is a Poirot book. I've never read it. I have only read the first Poirot book and I would like to work my way through the series. I think I like Miss Marple more, but I am excited to get to some of these Poirots at some point. Before we get to free library books, I wanted to mention a few books that I bought recently. The next two books I got from secondhand online bookstores. One of them is Nella Larson's Passing, which I have heard so much about. People talk about this book when they talk about Brit Bennett's The Vanishing Half, and they talk about this when they talk about Homecoming. So I am really interested to read this classic by a person of color. Another book that I got online used is the second book in the Red Dwarf series. I read Red Dwarf in February, and although it wasn't as good as the show, I was interested to see what happens in the books and if they diverge from the show. I would like to rewatch the show if possible before I start reading this book. The latest book that I bought from an online secondhand store is this Mycroft Holmes book. I do a blog every week called On My Mind on Friday Morning, and it's usually articles or things that I have noticed online, or things that I'm thinking about, or things that are happening at home, and one of the articles that I posted was about Sherlock Holmes and how now some Sherlock Holmes authors have written more than his creator, Arthur Conan Doyle. One of the people that I was surprised to have wrote a book about Sherlock Holmes is the basketball player Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I naturally had to pick up his book, Mycroft Holmes, about the Holmes brothers, focusing more on Mycroft Holmes. So I'm really interested to read this. It's kind of long for me. It's like just about 400 pages, just under 400 pages, like 397, which feels really long, but the chapters are pretty short and the like text is pretty big. Last book I couldn't resist because this copy was quite inexpensive. Kind of amused to see it's a book of the month copy, but I've been hearing so much about Leave the World Behind in 2020 and I really wanted to read it for myself. It's much shorter than I thought it was going to be, which is very exciting. This is one that I will probably get to pretty soon. These books that I got from online shops, I think Passing cost me like four dollars plus shipping. Better than life was like six fifty. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's Mycroft Holmes was somewhere in the six to seven dollar range. Leave the World Behind was about eight dollars. Eight dollars is more than I would normally spend for a used book, but it also seemed too good of a bargain to pass up. A few other books that I bought recently are The Garden Heist which I guess is a nonfiction true account of a famous art heist. I got this at a Goodwill and it was 99 cents. I've never read any Colson Whitehead, but I saw his first novel, The Institutionist, at Jack's Record Store in Red Bank, New Jersey. I didn't really realize that they have kind of a nice used bookshelf all the way in the back. They have about four big shelves with used books on them and this book was $2. 
Another Colson Whitehead book that I picked up recently, I picked up from Habitat for Humanity Restore by my house, and this is Colson Whitehead's The Nickel Boys, and this was $2. So now, all the rest of the books I got in Free Little Libraries. Like I was saying in my thoughts on video about book hauls, is that I don't love book hauls in general because I do think that they tend to be a unnecessary stress for a lot of people. I did want to show off books and I think that showing off books maybe is one of the problems with hauls because maybe I wouldn't have picked up every one of these books if I hadn't been so excited to show you that I could get them or got them. So some of these, especially the Free Little Library books, are newer, more interesting, more booktube darling books. I do find myself picking up more books and that's something that I need to keep an eye on. I don't want to necessarily pick up books just because somebody on booktube read them once. I want to make sure that I'm picking up books that really do sound interesting to me and that I am going to, you know, get joy from. One of my subscribers, thank you so much, recently said that they like hauls because it shows them books that they've never seen. That being said, Recently, in a free little library in Belmar, I found Agatha Christie, Mrs. McGinty's Dead, which is a Poirot novel, and what I thought was cool was that it, like, is the same cover series as this one that my mom gave me, so I really like that they were so similar. It would be cool maybe to get, like, all of these editions or something. Look at this Halloween one. It has a dead girl in an apple bobbing basket. Amazing. They remind me a little bit of the editions of the P.D. James books that I like so much. This book I picked up from a free little library a little bit more for my husband than me, but it did seem really interesting, and it is called Luckiest Man, the Life and Death of Lou Gehrig. We had just, like, the week before been having a conversation about Lou Gehrig's disease and Lou Gehrig and his time as a baseballer. My husband loves baseball, so baseball is a common theme. And this one just seemed really interesting. It had um, some very cool pictures. There are a lot of baseball books in my house that I could probably get to first. The next book that I picked up in a free little library is The Battle of New Orleans, Andrew Jackson and America's First Military Victory. Although you know I am not interested in war, my husband is from Andrew Jackson's hometown. I am interested in learning more about Andrew Jackson. We've visited the Hermitage and it was very interesting to see interesting to see the way they dealt with slavery and the slave quarters and I do hope to go back to the Hermitage and learn more. Andrew Jackson was probably not a nice guy but he endeared himself to me because when visitors came to his mansion in Hermitage, the Hermitage, he would give them rings or brooches with his hair in them as a parting gift. So wins my affection a little bit. I picked up this Richard Scarry Golden Book, The Bunny Book, because Richard Scarry is amazing. Pictures are gorgeous. I was really excited to find this Dorothy L. Sayers book in the Free Little Library by the Restore by my house. I've never read any Dorothy L. Sayers, but she is supposed to be a queen of Golden Age mysteries. I am really excited to read this one. I think this might be the first book in the series. It's called Unnatural Death. This one is also quite long, especially for a golden age mystery. It's almost 300 pages, but the font is tiny compared to the other book. I was excited to find one of Books and Lala's uh, favorite authors who I've never read, Ruth Ware, at a free little library. This is The Woman in Cabin 10. This book seems to be quite divisive in that some people love it and some people hate it. Ruth Ware seems to be that way anyway, but since I love closed circle mysteries and since I love kind of obvious mysteries and thrillers, I definitely wanted to give this one a try. At the free little library in a park near my house, I found Brain on Fire, My Month of Madness by Susanna Callahan. I've heard a lot about this since being on booktube. It is about a therapist who has a psychotic break and is committed. Her exploration of kind of being on the other side of therapy and her exploration and her experience being the patient instead of the doctor. I probably never would have picked this one up 
if it were not free, but it did seem really interesting, so I'm willing to give it a try at a free little library. In my free little library tag, I actually mentioned this book, which I had seen in a free little library and left there, and I was kind of sad that I left it because usually if I leave a book at a free little library that I'm interested in, you're never gonna see it again, but this one was actually there when I went back, so I was lucky enough to get it. It is Shakespeare's Flowers by Jessica Kerr, and it has Shakespeare quotes and Shakespeare sonnets that involve flowers and beautiful illustrations. It was illustrated by Anne Ophelia Dowden. I have never read any Toni Morrison, so when I saw Sula in a free little library, I picked it up right away. I have no idea what this is about, but I love the cover. I love that it is well loved. It's all taped on the edge. It has some handwriting in the back and also a high school library stamp. This is exactly the kind of book that I like to have in my collection. It's only 174 pages, which is exciting. Another book that I've seen on booktube quite a bit is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. I have no idea what this is about, but when I saw it in a free little library, I thought I would pick it up and give it a try. It is quite large. It's almost 500 pages, so that does damper my want to read it. And then the last two books that I got from Free Little Libraries are worth mentioning because they are incredibly new. They are both 2020 releases, they are both super popular on booktube, and it just goes to show that even if you do backlist hauls like I do, even if you read backlist like I do, even if you only buy secondhand like I do, even if you search out free books like I do, you can still read very current up-to-date books. So the first of these is Transcendent Kingdom by Yagazi. I cannot stop hearing about Yagazi on booktube, which is exciting. Everybody really seems to enjoy their work. Everyone kind of agrees that the writing is really amazing, even if people don't particularly love the story. I was a little bit more interested in Homecoming, which is an earlier novel of theirs, which I have actually seen in a free little library, but it was real sticky and I wasn't going to take it. I don't know what was on that, but it was gross. But this book is in perfect condition. It is very, very slightly worn, not bent on the spine, and since it was in a free little library, I might as well pick it up. Lastly is a book that I actually started reading in March, and that is The Wife Upstairs by Rachel Hawkins. In contrast to Transcending Kingdom, not everyone likes this book, but I hear about it all the time on booktube. It's quite short. It is a modern thriller, and I am about 50 pages in, okay so far. We'll see. Whatever. But again, a 2020 release, very buzzy book on booktube, and free at a free little library. That is my recently acquired book from free little libraries in New Jersey from various places, mostly just a few miles from my house. Have you read any of these books? Do you have a suggestion of what I should pick up next? Let me know in the comments below, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks so much.